Welcome back to CryptoSaurus. I am George. We're all George. So in this video, I want to talk about something very important, and that's how to take profits. I get asked this all the time, newcomers that's in this space that can't believe how much money they're making with Bitcoin and all coins. So they're worried. They want to know what is the best strategy in terms of how to take profits from your gains. So that is what this video is all about. I'm going to I'm going to break it down very simple, very simple for you guys. Uh, but I did want to warn you, there are some implications to it, to profit taking. So you got to be careful. But otherwise, it's a pretty simple concept and you never get hurt taking profits. Remember that you never get hurt taking profits. You could lose on potential gains, but you don't get hurt by that. Well, not maybe emotionally, emotionally a little bit, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't hurt your pocket. So let's dive right in. As always, smash up the like, guys. Um, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Two streams every day, 11.30 a.m. and 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So make sure you hit that notification bell and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All right, let's do this. Let's change the screen here. Let's change the screen. Boom. All right, Bitcoin is above... 60,000 again. It's still straddling at 60,000. I'm actually quite surprised. I'm actually really surprised that we didn't see some kind of big movement today, right? Ever since about a, a week ago, going to this weekend till now, you could see that Bitcoin is really caged up like a caged bull. Uh, that's That was what my video this morning was talking about. But I mean, you could see Volatility has stopped and Bitcoin is just straddling the 60,000 mark and it literally looks like it wants to break up, right? This Coinbase IPO causing a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of people very, very excited. So, I mean, it, this is the time. <laughs> this is the time to be moving, right? So we'll see. We'll see tomorrow. We got one more day before the IPO. Let's see if we get some excitement tomorrow. But in the meantime... A lot of the altcoins are doing very, very well, so you can't really be complaining, right? Altcoins have been on fire, especially some of the ones I've talked about before with, let's say, Binance Coin, KuCoin Shares, um, KuCoin Token, I mean, even XRP, um, and others, you know, that have gone up so much within the last week or so, and then you go back in the last few months, man, forget about it. You have 5X, 10X uh, all over the place, right? And this is all while Bitcoin has been stagnant, but it's time will come. It's time will come. And, uh, and there's going to be mu much, much more gains to be had. That is why taking profits is actually pretty important. Knowing how to do it is very important. All right. Uh, before I get started, I do want to give you guys a reminder about my giveaway. Five ETH giveaway and now 4,000 Nulls giveaway. I have that in my possession. Nulls sent it to me, so it's ready to go. So if you guys want to win, you got to participate. There's a lot of entries here. And of course, one big one, that is 1,000, uh, no, 100, 100. And I, I'm waiting because I'm going to add another one. Throughout the year, I'm going to add more secret entries. So make sure you check it out. And more secret codes for massive entries. So make sure, make sure you participate if you want to win some free crypto. All right, uh, let's, let's do this. Let's get started. Okay, so I don't think I have to read in Investopedia, okay, for you guys. <laughs> I think you guys are old enough to know what profit taking means, but to dumb it down as simply as possible, it's just it's just you locking your gains. Basically, if you made some paper gains with crypto, with Bitcoin or altcoins, it's time to lock in some of that that gains, right? Through profit taking. So easy example, you bought Bitcoin at $100. Now it's at $60,000. Well, if you sell one Bitcoin, you're going to make $59,900. You can go put that in your bank, right? That is profit taking. Now, before you actually sell to cash, which I know a lot of people do not want to do, it's very unpopular right now to have a lot of cash. So it's very unpopular to take profits and actually hoard a lot of cash at this point. I get it. I get it. But still, keep in mind, while these gains are locked in right now with your crypto, you know, essentially they're still 
paper gains until you can actually use it. And maybe one day, yes, that's going to be the case. We're just going to all use crypto and Bitcoin. But for now, cash is still important, right? So essentially, that is what profit taking is. Now, what is what is the strategy? It's actually really, really quite simple. It's really, really simple. Number one, and this is actually the most important. If you do this, if you at least follow this first step, you really don't have to follow any other steps afterwards. I mean, honestly, that's how important this first step is and how, how crucial it is, okay? So keep that in mind. And this pretty much sums it right away. Um, this Reddit post, double my money, take out my, take out initial investment, question mark. Yes, that sums it up. And the question, I mean, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. This is the number one rule for profit taking. And if you follow this, there is no way, zero chance that you could be burned. Okay. And let me explain. So like my example before with Bitcoin, I know it's unreasonable because I said buying at a hundred, very few people bought at a hundred, but just to make it simple, you buy Bitcoin or you buy any crypto at a hundred dollars and now it is at $200. So you doubled your money. So what do you do then? Well, you take out your initial investment, meaning that you take out your original hundred dollars. So that way, if, if the remaining amount goes down to zero somehow, Let's say those naysayers, right? Bitcoin goes to zero or altcoin goes to zero. It doesn't hurt you. You already took out your initial investment, right? That is why this number one rule, this number one um, profit taking strategy, I should say, is the most important of all. This is the number one thing. Whatever you put in, if you take out that exact amount, right? That means you're net zero. The remaining amount, if it goes to the moon, great. You could ride it up to the moon forever and you can make a lot of money with that. But if that whatever you're riding goes down to zero, it crashes hard and goes to zero, like a lot of still, some people say, you won't be hurt by it because you already took out your initial investment, right? So that is why this is that important. And like I said, if you don't follow any other profit-taking strategy out there, this is the one to follow. This is the most important. And you could simply follow this and not follow any other strategy. That's how important this is. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> All right, hopefully you guys got that, right? Hopefully you guys got that. Take out your initial investment. That is rule number one. Now, rule number two is really up to you. With whatever amount that you have riding, you know, that $100 left, remember the $100 example, it goes to 200, you take out 100, so you still have $100 left, right? And I'm talking about $100 in Bitcoin or all coins or whatever you may be holding. You could simply ride that to the moon, right? If you do believe that the project you're holding is going to be the future, or it's Bitcoin and it's gonna be the ultimate store of value, you can simply hold that forever. You could do that, but many will argue, well, that's probably not a smart move. So many, many will argue, you still need to take profits along the way. And that is when you set a strategy for yourself. And there's really no right or wrong. If it goes up 20 or 30%, you could take down, you could take off a little bit off the table. If it goes up 50 or 100%, you could take a little bit off the table. Right, So it's just a matter of what you're comfortable with, setting a schedule for yourself to take some off the table while things keep going up. Again, if you wanted not to do any of that, you could just let it ride to the moon. Right, As long as you took out your initial investment, you can't be burned. Right, The worst case scenario is whatever you're riding goes to zero, and then you start over from scratch, but you weren't hurt by it. Right, But um, I think this profiting schedule that's important as things go up and up and up. And a lot of you guys are seeing 100%, 200%, 500%, percent gains within a very short amount of time. And I know a lot of people are feeling antsy about it. Should you take profits? This is what you should do. Just basically set a schedule yourself and take some out for, your, uh, for um, you know, just to prepare yourself, right? In case things go down, you could utilize that to buy back in, buy at a lower price. There's a lot of things you could do with that. 
Now, a lot of people also ask me, hey, when you sell, do you sell to USD or do you sell to say a stable coin like USDC or USDT? Uh, that is really up to you. It, do, it, it doesn't really matter. It just matters what exchange you're using. If you're using Coinbase or Gemini, you could sell to USD. If you're using Binance or KuCoin, you could sell to USDT or USDC, right? Stable coins are supposed to be locked in at a dollar. So even if there is a market crash, USDC, USDT will stay at a dollar, right? Same thing with the USD. They're all, you know, the, the stable coins are backed, but basically to, or pegged, I should say, uh, backed and pegged to the USD. So whether you cash out to USD or USDT or USDC, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. However, okay, that all sounds good, but there is something, there is something that you need to worry about whenever you're taking profits. In fact, it, it goes beyond that. Um, even when you make a trade, there is something that you have to remember. And that is unfortunately crypto taxes. And this is something that no one wants to talk about. No one wants to talk about, no one wants to recognize it, but it's very important because the IRS and other tax agencies are coming down on crypto hard, especially the exchanges. So the crypto tax, like the, the laws right now, at least in the US is really a mess. So let me, let me cover exactly what counts as a taxable event or a capital gains event, okay? Whenever you sell crypto for fiat, that counts as a capital gains event. Every single sell. So when you do take profits, you have to worry about taking, you know, paying taxes on your profits. Yes, it sucks, but that's what the tax code says. Also, this really doesn't make sense. Using cryptocurrency to purchase goods and services, right? A lot of you guys want to buy things directly with Bitcoin, like a Tesla, for example. That also counts as a taxable event. And lastly, trading or swapping one asset to another, either on exchange or peer-to-peer -peer, is also a taxable event. So meaning, if you trade for USDT, USDC, or you sell to USDT, USDC, or you sell to ETH, or you sell to XRP, or you sell to BNB, whatever, Whatever, it doesn't matter. If you make any kind of trade with any kind of crypto, it's a taxable event also. So just keep those, keep those in mind, right? So there are things you have to worry about and it's a big, big, big mess. But yes, every single thing that you do besides just buying and holding, you know, that's not a taxable event until you sell it. But everything else is a taxable event. And this includes includes airdrops, you know how everyone loves to get air, free airdrops? Those are taxable. <laughs> interest earnings, staking interest um, from DeFi projects, they are taxable. Uh, mining income, you know, when you mine, right? You mine the ETH, you mine Bitcoin, those rewards are taxable. <laughs> Liquidity pools, like, you know, yield farming pools, NFT pools that you're getting rewarded from, those are taxables. <laughs> so yes, everything that is basically, uh, basically money earning or interest earning or whatever, uh, they're all taxable. Just, just keep that in mind. And I'm, I'm, I'm making this point right now because in the US we're, we're entering like the last month. <laughs> so that's why this is important. That's why this is important. All right. So besides tax, let me give you my bigger picture here, okay? My bigger picture. So besides rule number one, and that is to take out your initial investment, okay? And rule number two or strategy number two is basically setting a schedule for yourself to take profits, right? Um, but you may not want to follow the rule number two. You may just want to ride it to the moon, right? But let me give you my broader overview of this bull market. Right now, we're in the fourth year, 2021, of a four-year cycle. And the last year is always the most bullish. 2021 is going to be the most bullish year uh, versus 2020, 2019, and 2018, right? And the reason for that is because we're coming off of a halving event 
And this year is very different because of this list. Michael Strategy and Tesla and Square and everyone else that FOMOing into Bitcoin and causing the demand to skyrocket, which this never really existed before. Before it was always driven by retail investors. Now you have institutions and public trade companies that's FOMOing, plus the fact that yes, we're in the last year of a four year cycle, right? So if you look at this, this is what I'm seeing, that Bitcoin has a lot more room to grow, a lot more room to grow. We're not even really halfway. If we were in June or July or August, I would say, yeah, we're probably halfway. But right now we're nowhere close. And, and because of these big guys, you know what? This may never end. This may just flatten out and we continue up and up and up as the demand increases and as the supply decreases, we could go through a four year cycle. We could, we could be in a super cycle. We go beyond this four year cycle and just go into a massive super cycle. So here's my broader view is basically right now, for me at least, for me, I'm not so worried about aggressive profit taking. I'm very, I'm very, let's just say, loose with it. Initial investment, I already took that out a long time ago. I took some profits along the way, but for the most part, I'm just holding. You know, taxes basically is a pain. I don't want to, the less tax I have to deal with, the better. But also, I believe Bitcoin has a lot more room to grow, a lot more room to grow, which is why I'm not having a very aggressive profit-taking strategy right now. However, with that said, once we get into the latter half of the year, let's say October, November, December, and something fundamentally changes, then I will evaluate and I will let you guys know what I plan on doing, whether or not I'm going to take a lot off the top and we'll take a lot of profits in anticipation of maybe a down cycle or something like that. Or if there's some other kind of event that will ultimately change the landscape. Until then, you know, I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to let, for the most part, let things ride out because I think there's just so much room to grow. And if Bitcoin continues to grow and you can see it's right on track. I drew this in February of 2020, February of 2020. I have not changed these arrows. I didn't just redraw them. No, I drew these <laughs> in February 2020. And even though, yes, I was very wrong over here when we had a dip, you could see how accurate it is right now. We are literally following this right now. And if this comes true, Bitcoin will be at $400,000, $500,000 by the end of the year, right? So there's still a lot of room to grow for Bitcoin. And if that's the case, if that's the case, if Bitcoin's gonna go up literally eight to 10X from here, there is going to be enormous, 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 enormous gains for all coins. All coins are going to skyrocket to the moon and beyond the moon and go to Mars, right? So that's how I view it. Bitcoin will always carry the market. And if Bitcoin has more legs, you know, to keep going, so will the entire market. So that's what I'm looking at. And take a look, take a look at the BTC dominance. It went down even lower. Yesterday I talked about BTC dominance. I'd create a whole video about it and how you could use that as an indicator or pattern of whether or not we're in all coin season, whether or not we've topped out and so forth, right? Look at it, it went even lower. And that's because you have crazy gains with Binance coin that is above 92 billion now, closing at 100 billion. I said it, I said it all along. I'm like, look at it, Binance coin is gonna be at 100 billion pretty soon. And then that gap really narrows between ETH and Binance coin, and that's happening now. But even XRP, which I folded, I'm like, it's irresponsible not to have some XRP at this point in your portfolio. And it continues to go up too. And today you have also Uniswap that's pumping up like crazy, 21%, among other crypto that is also doing very well, which is why Bitcoin dominance is coming down and altcoin dominance is actually increasing, right? So... So yeah, there you go. So uh, my, my broader view, my overview, I guess, is that you know I think there's a lot more room to grow, right? But with that said, there's gonna be volatility. It's not gonna be a straight line up. We have seen volatility. We have seen things come up and down and so forth, right? So I know a lot of people don't wanna think about profit taking ever, not even taking out initial investment, but I would say if you don't follow any other rule, any other strategy, at least follow number one, and that is to take out initial investments. So 
if things turn for the worse and really, really badly, you still won't be hurt by it, right? So hopefully, hopefully that helps you guys. Hopefully that helps you guys. All right, um, Bitcoin is still doing pretty well, 60,500. Maybe we're gonna make some traction. Maybe we're finally going to come up. Um, all right, so before Q&A, got a new sponsor today, Zignali. Zignali, a new way to invest in crypto. Now, there's something very interesting about this project that I just discovered, and they didn't even share it with me. I just discovered it. I'm going to share it, with that, share it with you what that is. But Zignali, for the most part, is about copy trading. Basically, they have a bunch of experts, and if you don't feel like you know what you're doing, you can basically copy their portfolio, okay? And you know what? If they gain, you gain. If they lose, you lose. However, they're introducing a product that helps with that. But also... Besides copy trading, they also have a trading bot. And here's the very interesting thing. Recently, I just covered um, Binance and KuCoin and all the features that they, they offer. Number one, uh, a new thing that I noticed on KuCoin is they have a trading bot. Guess what? That trading bot is from Zignali. I had no clue. So, so they, uh, they do have a deep partnership, uh, Zignali and KuCoin. Because KuCoin is utilizing trading bot and the copy trading feature, I think, is actually getting integrated as well. But I mentioned about how maybe whoever you're copying as Ignali does really poorly and you lose money. That's that's horrible, right? So that's why they announced they raised three million dollars in private sale to launch an NFT insurance protocol. It's based on NFT. I didn't even think that you could do this with NFT, but they're basically launching insurance against <laughs> bad trades that's that's what it is if you if you break it down if you break it down you look at this insurance protocol you invest your capital with a pro trader and that trader generates a monthly return below their drawback percentage then insurance coverage is triggered to reimburse the difference the extent of insurance depends on the investor that is how much of the capital is secured via insurance nft which can be purchased with zinc which is their native token so that's actually kind of interesting that they have copy trading. And if you happen to make a bad decision, you could buy insurance so that if that pro trader screws up, you, you could get refunded for that. You, you could get insured for that. So that's actually very, very unique. Very, very unique. Anyways, so that's Zignali, their new NFT insurance. And if you want to learn more about them and what they're all about, check out their URL in the description of this video. All right, guys, that is pretty much it. I'll turn to you guys for some Q&A. All right. Gino gave me a super chat out of the kindness of his heart, so I appreciate that. When is the H bar interview? Um, soon, soon. I do have I do have that ready to go. I will release it pretty soon. And uh, this is an interesting conversation with Mance. I'll say that he, he's a smart guy. He he's worked in an interesting places like the Air Force. So yeah, that'll be a good one. Uh, Gene asks, or G no Sean asks, not not yeah. Do you think uh, nulls will be added to any U.S. exchanges in the future? I hope so. I hope so. I think, you know, a lot of these coins that had ICO, you know, it's really hard for them to be listed within a U.S. exchange because U.S. exchange doesn't want to be sued or something like that. Just like Coinbase was sued because XRP got sued by SEC, right? So I think there's a lot of U.S. exchanges are very worried about it. But um, but hopefully, hopefully, you know, it'll happen sooner than later. I don't know what these projects have to do. If they have to go to the SEC and register themselves, I don't know. But there's so many good ones out there. There's so many good ones out there that are unlisted right now, and hopefully they get they get listed soon. Uh, parachute token. Very small. Crypto for everyone with 40,000 users, 2 million payments, the first decentralized financial derivatives protocol. We're building the future of finance. Uh, <laughs> what's up with these names? 
Hedgy, which is a DeFi platform. It's Robinhood for Uniswap, Parajar Pear Wallet. Okay, it's a payment system and they have the pair token. So they have a DeFi and they have they have a DeFi system, um, app, I guess, uh, DAP, and they have a wallet that can send transactions. I mean, at face value, this doesn't look bad. This doesn't look bad at face value. Let's see, one of the co-founders, uh, full stack senior developer. This is a three-time tech founder and holds a membership in some, some labs. I have no idea. Extensive background with JP Morgan. You know what? It doesn't actually look bad. It actually doesn't look bad. Uh, they're very small cap. Yeah, being on Uniswap will probably hold them back. But then again, they have a DeFi app that's on top of Uniswap. So if it's good as they say, then you could use it to buy their own token. Okay. I'll put that in a maybe list. They could do well. They could do well. With Binance on the rise, what's your new ETH target? Oh, man. Um, I, you know, I don't think anything changes with ETH. My original target for ETH is about 10x from where they are. Um, actually, I said... 10,000, but I changed it to 10x because I think they go more or less follow Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes up 10x, they're probably going to go 10x. Bitcoin goes up 5x, they'll probably go up 5x. Maybe a little bit faster, but for the most part, Ethereum is following Bitcoin very, very closely. So I don't think it changes. If Binance coin flips above Ethereum, um, I think it's still going to be the same. I think Binance coin will just continue flying and Ethereum will more or less move with Bitcoin still. So I'll stick with that. I'll stick with that. I don't think that changes. Uh, can you educate me on Tesla on a hot bit? Well, that's just like, it's a synthetic Tesla share, just like Binance. They, they listed it. And I know a few other exchanges have it. Basically, you're buying a token that's following the price of Tesla. It doesn't mean you own a Tesla share. It just means that you're following, you're trading something that follows in its footsteps. Um, I have no opinion about UBX. It seems like every single, every single session, someone tries to show UBX and I'm just going to say, okay. Uh, can you say hello to my bra, Sean? He just got into crypto and he's a new subscriber and just an awesome person. Well, hey, Sean, welcome. Appreciate that you're here. Can you explain how KuCoin dividends work? Do you think it could be a 20 billion project this year? KuCoin dividend is very simple. If you hold more than 6KCS, basically you get a portion of the trading fees. 50% all trading fees collected is distributed among all KCS holders. So as long as you hold six or more, you go get it. But it basically, it's it's a pot. If there's a hundred, uh, let's say a, a million people holding KCS, um, and you you hold your the, the amount that you hold is ranked, I don't know, in the top fifty or something. Eh, no, that's a bad example. Basically, your your portion is compared to the pool, and that's how much you get reward. Something like that. Uh, hopefully, that makes sense. I don't know. I kind of butchered that. What's your opinion on when, if China legi uh, legalizes crypto, how high do you see VeChain going up? I think that's that's going to be the ultimate driver for VeChain. I think VeChain has started going up kind of because people are seeing a bigger picture. But I, I've always said there could be a top 10 coin. So that's at least 14 billion this, you know, right now. But, you know, if they get real traction, they could they could climb. They could get they could climb really fast. You know, China allows their citizens to basically invest in their own things, like real estate and in companies. It's very hard for Chinese citizens to invest outside the U.S., significant amounts, I mean. So imagine if they legalize crypto and everyone is forced to only invest in crypto companies that's based in China, guess who they're going to invest with? VeChain. And all that money could drive VeChain as high as Ethereum one day, you know? So, Yeah. Uh, what do you think about privacy wallet blank? I don't really like privacy stuff, so I'm not going to like it. <laughs> what do you think about deeper network? Their IDO was Friday, so they're going to be a very, very new project. Uh, 
they're not doing pretty they're not doing good today decentralized internet infrastructure yeah just too there's too many so this is basically copying uh uh on uh, nkn you know basically you will try to utilize nodes and create a new decentralized internet it's it's too it's too encompassing i i just I don't, I don't like it. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, all right, I missed a lot of small super chats here. So, thoughts on crypto and a Roth IRA for tax free growth? You know what? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> you can see that banner with I Trust Capital. They're all about that. So I, um, I partnered up with them. And uh, they offer that. Not only can you transfer your IRA and 401k there, you could also uh, open up a Roth IRA and basically trade crypto tax-free. It's very, very interesting. It's very interesting. So uh, if you want to learn more about it, contact them. I have their uh, URL in the description. But that's one of the reasons why I partner with them because it's like, wow, I didn't know you could do that. Uh, what what three altcoins, Matthew asked, what three altcoins do you think has potential to reach 50,000 long term? I mean, that's a hard question because you're, you're asking like, are you asking for the price? Are you asking how much you can make? And that depends on how much you put in. I, I, I can't answer that. I can't answer that. But just pay attention. I'm sure you're a loyal follower. Pay attention to the projects I've talked about and then make your own decisions and you'll see. There's a lot of them that can make you a lot. Uh, silly question. Do you use VPN for other exchanges, uh, early buys and non-US tokens? I can't advise you on whether or not you should do that or not because there are instances where exchanges detect that and you know what? You get banned or you get your tokens locked. So technically, I guess you could do it, but there could be some very, very bad, <laughs> bad repercussions. So be careful with that. Is it too late to hop on one vet seller train? No, it's never too late. I mean, the market is so early. I don't see how it could be too late. So I'm not that, I'm not a fan of seller, but I'm a big fan of Harmony and VeChain. And they're still very early. Thoughts on the FXF, just tease crypto.com. Let's see. You know what? What is this? There's so many projects now that's teasing some kind of listing. And they're not true. They're not true or people are just making it up. So I don't know. Phoenix Flow. Uh, I looked at them yesterday. I forgot. And listing at crypto.com is not going to make them pump. Yeah, they're liquidity aggregator. Um, yeah, if if they're listed on KuCoin or or um, or Binance, they will be pumped. But getting out on KuCoin, I mean, crypto.com is not going to make them pump. Will I, by any chance, acquire some shares of Coinbase soon? Uh, that's a good question. I have to see. I have to see what happens after IPO, whether or not it dies down and studies out or continues to go up. I think I think that'll be the. You have to wait because a lot of these IPOs they they shoot up like first day and then the second day they tank and then for the rest of the week they tank. Hopefully that's not the case with Coinbase. So we'll see. Uh, what are my thoughts on Bab? Uh, I'm neutral on Bab. I forgot what they were about. Um, oh yeah, they were um, fundraising. It's just not very appealing. BDC hang at sixty k seems fishy. Thoughts wrench as well. I've I've said that for a while, right? That something is holding it back, but we're getting some traction. Let's see the near. The near top right now is about 61,000. The top is a little bit higher. But I do think there's something going on. I, I, I thought today we would see a bigger rally because I think this is building up to the Coinbase IPO. But maybe not. Maybe not. Um, but, you know, we'll see tomorrow. Right right now, what I do know is Bitcoin is very steady. You know, just the past few weeks, we've seen some small little volatility here or there. People panic, but there's no reason to panic. But while Bitcoin has been steady, um, all coins have been exploding. So definitely, 
you know what? Having a diversified portfolio really helps. And you just wait it out. When Bitcoin's ready to move, it will. Paul asked, do you estimate that KuCoin has a good chance to skyrocket like BNB? Will KuCoin be more desirable for investors? Um, you know, especially with her new chain. They're coming out the new chain. I don't know when it's going to come out exactly, but that chain actually draws in a lot of depth, just like Binance Smart Chain did. It could help them tre tremendously, but they do have a ton of projects out there. And right now, I think their biggest draw is that U.S. residents can use them, right? Where a lot of these other exchanges do not allow that. So, um, yeah, the the Werex or something, WRX. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all because India is so flip floppy on on whether or not Bitcoin is legit or loud or banned. I, I don't know. Awesome. Appreciate it. Will Polygon mad I stay stagnant until E2.0? No. No. It will hurt them if E2.0 came out right away. So this is their time to shine. Uh, they do have a lot of DeFi projects on top, but um, I don't know. There's just, there's just a lot of Layer 2s right now and a lot of chains that, that are doing very hot. So I, I like Polygon, but it's going to take a while. Uh, helium, I do like Helium quite a bit. Pundi, you know, Pundi did their re-denomination, their new token is out, but it's been kind of steady, kind of steady. You know, I kind of thought more will be done, but they are going to introduce native staking and their new mainnet pretty soon, so that could help them, right? Uh, Hellcat says one is about to pump. Hey, you, you like, Hellcat, you flip-flop more than... Uh, a lot of guys here you're like all about one and then you're like i've got off the, the harmony bandwagon i'm on go and then you're off go and you're like oh, oh yeah just go with bitcoin and now you're coming back on to harmony <laughs> but it's okay man uh skl solid team oops this is not where i want to go scale yeah Second, you know, uh, layer two solution for Ethereum to to speed it up. You know, there's just there's just a lot. There's just a lot of competition out there. I mean, that's quite quite simply it. Uh, John, appreciate that. There's another one. G E E Q. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. You guys got any urgent questions? Ask it. Um, embrace blockchain with confidence. Proof of honesty protocol. Safe enough for most valuable asset. Cheap enough for IoT. Okay. Yeah. I can't tell just by looking at it. It, it sounds like every other blockchain out there, so... Sorry. Um, all right, you guys got a lot of questions. All right, uh, let's wrap it up. I'm trying to fully understand only BNB. It's the same as only a share of Binance. Uh, at this point, you got to look at it that way. But it's a utility token too because you get, you know, you get benefits for you utilizing it um, within their AMAs and their exchanges and so forth. But many view it as as a share of the company, basically. Storage or file, I would go file out of the two. Or I would say go R weave. R weave. Uh, where do you see Uniswap going from here? I'm quite honestly surprised that Uniswap keeps pumping. Um, I just actually did a comparison that Pancake Swap is bigger than Uniswap in usage, in users, in liquidity locked in. Yeah, Uniswap continues to pump. I guess, you know, this is the advantage of being the big dog and being supported by Coinbase, right? But. You know what? It could just con it could. There's a big gap between eight and seven, so I don't know if they could catch up to Polkadot anytime soon. But they could definitely move with the market. Uh, yes, I heard of Wan Chan, uh, Wan Chain, and they looked up with uh, XRP. I'll have to look into that. They kind of rebranded themselves from a supply chain space, uh, so I kind of got off the bandwagon. But I'll look at what they're they're doing with XRP. But they don't really they don't really compete with that anymore. Uh, you still getting Doquan? I 
I uh, postponed that. Uh, Tara's um, CEO because I want to get a fancier setup for interviews. So I want to do them live and do it better. So I postponed it. Uh, 3X long Cardano token. Can you look at it? Uh, yeah, Coinbase is not going to come out with that. That's, that's more like on Binance and other exchanges. So basically, it's supposed to move three times as fast. Eternity platform just launched today. Well, you know what? There was a lot of coming soon on, uh, <laughs> on the platform. And, you know, today launching did not help them one bit. So it was, it, quite honestly, Eternity was too hyped up for what it was. And there was nothing. All right. I don't have time to look at that. Um, is it everything based on this guy right here? Jason Huser. Welcome to the internet exclusively at Eternity by Jason Huser. Is he the, is he the founder? All of these are from him. See, everything else is like uh, coming soon, coming soon, coming soon. Like, literally, I mean, honestly, who's going to buy this? Who, who could buy this? I don't know. Do you guys know this guy? Unless he's really famous, I don't know who would be buying this. Yeah, that, that's probably why it dropped 16%, because no one knows what the hell's going on. So, all right. Um, that's pretty much it. I'll let you guys go. Overall, you know what? Tonight could be very exciting. Bitcoin's back up. Let's see if it could break that 61,000 and continue on 62 and beyond. You know, with one day left or two days left with the, before the Coinbase IPO, maybe we see some explosiveness. We'll see if uh, we'll see <laughs> we'll see what happens. But uh, you know what? In the meantime, all coins are doing really, really good, really, really good. But like I always remind you guys, you don't have to go for those ultra law small micro caps and make money. Even mid caps, big caps, they make a ton of money because they move really quickly. But hopefully, you guys understand a little bit more about profit taking. And if you don't follow anything else about profit taking, at least take out your initial investment so you can't get burned. If you follow this, uh, you'll be fine. This is the number one rule. Number one rule. But after this, it's up to you. And remember, crypto taxes suck, but anytime you trade or profit take, you do have to worry about taxes. All right, guys, that is it. Thanks for tuning in. As always, smash the like, subscribe to the channel. And you know what? Uh, just for a hell of it, uh, for the giveaway, right? For the, oops. For the giveaway, the secret code, three characters long. Think about it. Three characters long. And it has to do with this XRP commercial. This is the biggest clue I can give you. Enjoy. <laughs> What do you think about Ripple? Well, I mean, I think it's too centralized, but I definitely want to meet Chris Larson. <laughs> <laughs>